Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to start a series on digital data modes and why the heck they're so freaking difficult. And the answer is simple if you guys wanna drop right here. It wasn't designed for humans. It just was not designed for you. Uh, data modes are very complicated, unnecessarily complicated, and in a perfect world, someone like the late Steve Jobs would have designed it and we would have had a simple all-in-one device that you could hand to your grandmother without a manual. That's just not the state of things. So what I wanna to try to do is share with you my experience, try to make it very simple to explain what data modes are, what value they have for preparedness, and show you a bunch of different ways to uh, set them up with the gear that I have. So for today, we're actually gonna be using the DigiRig, and I'll explain what this is in a second. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel but there are other ways of interfacing your radio with a computer or phone and some of the things we're going to talk about in future uh, videos in the series are things like the sovereign usb with a cable that does cat control and um, will take uh, basically use your data port to get uh, audio in and out we'll also take a look at the digilink nano which is about the same size of the digirig it's another sound card interface that allows you to essentially do the same thing, get uh, audio in and out of your radio and into your computer. And then we'll also take a look at the uh, BTEC APRS K1 cable for the bow fangs. And then we'll try a handful of radios uh, to make things practical and hopefully make things stick after we get through about five or six videos. So uh, let's get started uh, with kind of the high level of what digital data modes or just simply data modes are and are not. So for the purpose of this series, we are not talking about the voice digital modes like DMR, uh, D-Star, or Yesu System Fusion. So forget about that. If that's why you came, this is not the video series for you. Instead, all it is is quite simply, a data mode is a way of taking your radio your computer or your phone and being able to send uh, audio between the two in and out of each system, digitally encoding them, and then having some software that can make use of that uh, signal. So as a really good example, the types of things that we're gonna cover in terms of data modes for this video ser series are ones that have a touch point with preparedness, uh, specifically on VHF and UHF, so basically your uh, handhelds. So we're gonna take a look at APRS, the Automatic Packet Reporting System. We're gonna take a look at WinLink Packet. We're gonna take a look at the FL Digi Suite to do uh, keyboard to keyboard uh, message passing and file transfers. And uh, we'll probably touch on a couple of other areas, but those are the main ones I'd like for preparedness. Um, and once you get your system set up, adding another application to the mix like slow scan TV um, or FT8, uh, all the same basic principles apply. So if you're interested in any of that, stick around. So for today's episode, we're gonna do uh, an integration whereby we're gonna take our Baofeng UV5R radio, and I selected this because I wanted to start with a simple integration and uh, something that's uh, pretty much the lowest bar to entry because these are very inexpensive. So we'll use that as our two meter 440 radio. So VHF, UHF. And then I purchased the uh, DigiRig, which is a really cool device. Um, it's actually more than just a sound card interface uh, that takes the audio in and out of your radio and also takes the audio in and out of your computer. Uh, it also has uh, like a serial port embedded so it can do things like engage uh, the push the talk button when you want to transmit. Um, and it actually also supports a full cat control interface. So you can control uh, some radios, like changing the frequency, changing the band, changing the mode, very powerful. But the first one's gonna be very simple. And I'll have to say that uh, I paid for everything here. Uh, this is not a sponsored video, uh, but I have been conversing with uh, Dennis. He's got a cool call sign. It's uh, K0TX uh, and uh, him and I are talking about some cable options and a few other things. So stay tuned, especially if you're an FTM 6000 user. 
So here's the DigiRig, and then here are the two cables we're gonna use. Uh, this is the cable specifically designed for the um, Baofeng radio and the DigiRig. Uh, I did not purchase the USB-C to USB-A cable, uh, so I just used an old one I had. And then over here, we're gonna use my CF20 Toughbook, and it's running Linux, and we're basically gonna run a couple pieces of software today. So as you can see, we already have a radio, an interface between the radio and the computer, a couple of very specific cables, very specific operating system, and a couple pieces of software. So you can see why this is actually pretty difficult in practice. All right, so the very first thing we need to do is figure out which settings we have to configure for our radio. Now, I don't have a fancy setup, so I'm not gonna do any fancy overlays here. So we're gonna have to just dictate what I'm doing. So we're gonna turn on our radio, in this case, the Baofeng. And can you hear all that noise in the background? Uh, what that basically means is that the squelch is completely open. Listen. And for APRS and packet work, we want the squelch open. On my other radios, I can actually control it really nicely. So you can hear that there's nothing coming out. The um, uh, audio is squelched um, or closed. Now if I rotate the dial to open up the squelch, you can hear all of the noise. So for packet work, we want to open up the squelch. And to do that on the Baofeng, we're gonna to go to menu, and the first option is gonna be called squelch. It's SQL, and you want that set to zero. That will basically give you that noise, and that's exactly what you want. The next one we wanna to go to is to, um, to save, and this is the power saver. It's option, I don't know what menu option, but you want it turned to off. You don't want this to go into a power saver mode, and not. if you do that, you may not be able to decode packets, so just set it to off. The other option here is, is Vox. Uh, we don't wanna have the voice activation triggered, uh, there's another use case for digital that does use Vox. We'll get into that and why you probably want to avoid that in a future video. And then there is TDR, and I believe this has to do with the dual watch. This radio uh, can actually switch between band A and band B, and it does it pretty quickly. And if you're trying to get a packet, a digital message coming over the air, you don't want it to be switching between that band and another band, otherwise, it's not gonna be able to decode properly. So TDR has to be off. And I wanna say that's pretty much it for it. And then the other thing, uh, in this demo, we're just gonna be looking at the automatic packet reporting system. And in the US, that runs on uh, frequency 144.390. So we've got the radio. Next thing we want to do is connect our radio-specific interface cable. Uh, this is the one from uh, Mo or DigiRig, and we'll plug this guy in. You wanna make sure it's seated in very nicely. And then on the back here, there are actually uh, two ports. One is for audio and one is for serial. Uh, they do have a cable that they give you when you buy the uh, kit for the Baofeng. It's a green cable and it's designed for programming. We're not gonna get into that, so we wanna make sure we plug this one into the audio port. And then we wanna make sure we connect the uh, USB-C to USB-A cable. All right. And let's go ahead and find a USB port. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and turn on our radio. Now, you'll notice that there's a little sticker here at the top. I'll tell you why I have that sticker uh, in a minute. All right, so now we basically have the computer booted on, we have uh, everything connected up. The next thing we want to do is go over to our computer, and I'm gonna try to record this for you guys, so give me one second. All right, so the first thing we want to do now that we have everything connected is to open up a terminal. And I'm hoping the screen recording is gonna work here. And like I said, this device does two things. The DigiRig presents two USB devices to your computer. 
The first is a sound card so that we can get audio in and out. And the second one is the serial port so that we can do things like either cat control or engage the push to talk button to transmit. So we'll start with the sound card setting first. So we need to understand which sound card device we have. And for that, we're just gonna enter in a record space dash L. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm gonna put this all in a blog post. I'm gonna skip over some stuff and it'll have the step-by-step -step instructions for this configuration. So what you have to remember with the DigiRig is that um, the device will be consistently called USB PNP or plug and play sound device. Uh, so this applies to everybody across the board. What might, may be different for you is which card number. In my case, the DigiRig is being presented as card one and then as device zero. So those are the two pieces of information that you need to know. So now we're gonna go ahead, now that we have this information in mind, uh, we, we're gonna configure a piece of software called Direwolf and the instructions on my blog post will show you how to uh, install that. And Direwolf basically asks, acts as a modem between your radio and the computer and it does that all in software. So if you guys are under the age of 40, uh, go ask your parents or someone over the age of 40 and ask them what the modem is. And all it does is like I said, take in audio signals, uh, does an encoding or decoding uh, so that we can actually interface our computer with the outside world using either a telephone or radio. So we're gonna use a, uh, basically a modem of sorts called Direwolf. And it has a configuration that again, was not designed for humans, but fantastic piece of software. And what we want to configure up in Direwolf are the sound device, or yeah. All right, and I'm gonna search for a device. And we can see here that it has, again, not designed for humans, plug HW, and then it has two numbers. The first is the card, and the next one is the device. So I told you we were one, zero. So it's one comma zero. So we're all set there. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and close this. Now the next thing we want to do is uh, configure the sound levels for the sound card. And there's a utility called ALSA, A-L-S-A Mixer. Sorry, this keyboard is incredibly tiny. And it'll show you all of the sound cards you have installed on your machine. And we want to find the DigiRig sound card. So press F6. And you remember that name, uh, USB PMP sound device. We saw that with the A record command. So hit enter and it will present to you uh, the levels for your speaker, your microphone, and the automatic gain control. Now I found setting the speaker to 100 and the microphone to 100 to be a good start. So we'll tab over to the right to mic and then use the up arrow keys and we'll set that to 100. Now. The automatic gain control, I found if you don't turn it off, that the audio is way too high, especially when the squelch is open all the way. So just hit the M key for mute, and you, see, you should see an MM there. And really that's all there is to uh, this part of it. And clearly, not designed for humans, right? Um, so now the next thing we can do is let's go ahead and start Direwolf. Again, we're starting our modem so that we're able to encode and decode uh, the RF signals that are coming in, convert that to digital so that the computer can understand it. So we're gonna start Direwolf. And Direwolf now is up and running and it's essentially our software modem. And other applications in the amateur radio space can actually use this modem to do various things. So that's step one. Now, to properly decode an audio signal that's coming in over the air that this guy hears, we need to make sure that we have the volume set at the right level to decode. So to do that, we're gonna do a few things here. We're gonna take a, a second radio for simplicity. Um, actually, we need to turn on this guy, yeah. We need to turn him on. 
And I'm gonna do one thing real quick. I'm gonna set him to 144 decimal 300. Okay, I'm gonna put it on a different frequency uh, so that I don't get a whole bunch of uh, packets from another station. All right, so I'm gonna take a second radio and I'm gonna put that on 144 decimal 300. And I want this so that you guys can hear the sounds that are traveling between one station and this station. We'll just put this here. The next thing we're going to do is I'm gonna to pretend to be another station and we're gonna set up another packet station. So we're gonna take our radio Put this one on 144 300. And I have a slightly different uh, interface for digital here. Again, not for humans. There's got to be a different cable, a different radio, and a different device for everything we do. So in this case, I'm using the MobiLink TNC2. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and connect it to my Android phone. And really, all of this is basically simulating station A station B, and we're going to be able to send some messages back and forth. Um, and we'll see how that goes. So give me a second for uh, this uh, really old, uh, ultra rugged phone to boot up, and uh, we'll get to the next steps. All right, guys, I have my Android device booted up, and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to launch the APRS Droid app. We're going to talk about this in a future video. But basically, this is a client that we can use to send uh, packets so that we can do text-to-text -text messaging and also location-based uh, goodness. All right, so when I hit start tracking here, this is going to pair with my station B here. You actually heard a packet fly through. Um, so on this screen now, uh, you can actually see a bunch of messages flying across in Direwolf. And these are the decoded audio packets. And what's really key here is where it says audio level. You notice that everything is in green. If I set the volume on the radio that's receiving this too high, let's say, let's say I put it at maybe 50%, you can now see that in red, audio input level is too high. Um, all that means is you need to figure out the right uh, audio level for receive that you need to set this to. And I typically put like a little sticker at the top so I know where to stop it. So I'm gonna take mine and maybe bring it down about, I think in my case it needs to be about, only about 10% of the way. It may vary, I've had other radios where I have to turn it 50%. So let's clear this screen and let's see how that looks. And I'm gonna send another packet. So I'll send a position. And it looks pretty good. So this is the first thing I really wanted to share with you guys was adjusting the audio levels so that this station could properly receive that signal and then so it could properly be decoded by the modem, in this case, Direwolf. And what we're seeing here looks good. So at this point, one half of our station is working and we're receiving. So let's switch over to the transmit side. And we're going to open up a new window here. And we're going to open up Direwolf. And for the Baofeng in particular, the way that you engage push to talk so that it can transmit a audio signal out over the air is by searching for PTT or push to talk. And you'll notice that there's a bunch of configuration options here. Uh, in my write-up on the website, uh, this is how I'm recommending you set yours up. Uh, I've got PTT as the first value, space, and then the device. And it's basically like a COM port in Windows, but I've named mine dev tty dash digirig space, and then the mode is RTS, which stands for ready to transmit, RTS. Again, not for humans, very complicated. Now. Most people will show you in their videos to use a device of like TT or dev, TTY, USB, zero through whatever. Uh, in the write-up, I actually show you a way on how to create an alias. So it's a meaningful name like TTY Digirig. 
Um, and there's a little bit of process using the device manager in Linux, but it makes things very easy because as you plug in multiple devices, it will always be consistent by this name. You don't have to plug it in one day and it's gonna be recognized as TTY USB zero, and then tomorrow it's recognized as TTY USB one. And then the next day it's TTY USB three and constantly have to go back and change it in this configuration. So I'm trying to make things easier for you guys by coming up with a consistent way of naming your devices. So look to the blog post on how to do that. So now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and start our first uh, digital mode application and we're gonna use Yak, yet another APRS client. And I'll try to put the directions on my website uh, to talk about how to set this up. But it's a Java-based application, so we're gonna use Java space jar, and where I have it installed, we want to uh, specify the name of that application file or that jar file. And I don't know if you heard that, but basically when Yak started up, it sent out a position beacon because I am running GPS on this device and it basically beacons out the location so we have the map. Uh, on this device here, let's go ahead and open up APRS Droid. And let's clear everything on this screen real quick. And we're gonna send a position beacon. So basically on station B, we're gonna send out a packet over the air. The Baofeng will receive it. The MobiLink will take that audio. Direwolf will go ahead and decode it and display it. So let's go ahead and do send position. And let's also go back to Direwolf here real quick. So when I do send position, we have our packet here and it looks like the audio level is too high. I probably bump the control here a bit. So now that we've beaconed, uh, one thing we can do in the APRS client is we can actually locate station B. It's pretty cool. We'll go to locate, station or object, and it'll have a list of all the stations that it has heard. It did hear my phone, which is KT1 RUN-7, and it went ahead and showed us exactly where we are. And we could zoom in here and it'll try to re-render uh, everything properly. So we already have now communication just using packet radio, no infrastructure, everything's offline between these two stations. Uh, another cool thing we can do with this setup now is we can send uh, messages back and forth. So in the APRS Droid app, I'm station B, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new message. And I have this laptop configured with the station ID of one, and I have this one configured with the station ID of seven. So this is KT1RUN-1, this is KT1RUN-7. So let's talk to the laptop. So KT1RUN-1, and let's just say hello from Android. So we should hear the audio when I say okay and a message should pop up on the screen. And the audio level may be too low. Did I not? Uh... Yeah, so this is why this stuff is not designed for humans. Uh, haven't taken the time to take my own advice and put the little arrow with my pen. So let me give it a little bit more volume there. And let me go ahead and resend that. It's still not picking it up. I wonder if the cable is properly seated. All right, so this is exactly why this stuff is extremely fragile and not designed for humans. Let's try one more test here. I mucked around a little bit more with the audio levels. And I'll just put test two here. All right, and there we go. 
So we have now over here in um, APRS Droid, we received that message. So bottom line here, guys, is all of this stuff is unnecessarily complex. As you can see, we have two completely different configurations. On the Station B side, I'm running the Android. I'm running APRS Droid as an application. It has a unique interface. On this state, I'm also running a HT, the FT60R, with a special interface cable with another device. This is the MobiLink TNC2. And then over here, the laptop configuration is a little bit more complicated. Uh, we have the Baofeng with the cable specifically for the DigiRig. We have the DigiRig itself. We have the USB cable. We're running Linux. And then we had to configure the sound card. We had to configure the uh, serial device for it. And I didn't even show you all of it. I'm pointing you guys to the website. And then um, we had to adjust the audio levels for both transmission and receive so that we can encode and decode the package properly. And then we have a little bit of a learning curve of using the APRS application. Now that's just one digital mode. So we didn't talk about WinLink and Packet with this setup. We didn't talk about um, FL Digi or a whole host of other things. So this is why this stuff is so complicated. So hopefully in this first video, I don't think I quite succeeded in helping you guys all that much other than sharing with you some tips um, and pointing you to some other uh, documentation I'm putting. But you can kind of see why there is the need for someone to take the lead and build a an appliance designed for humans. Um, outside of that, uh, I'm really happy with the DigiRig. I plan to do more experiments, uh, specifically with my ManPack build, so stay tuned for that. So hopefully these videos will get better. This was the first one, I feel like it was a little bit rough, but um, hopefully you get the point. Don't get discouraged, keep at it. Um, if you're a Windows person, unfortunately, I will never be the guy to help you. Uh, I am more of a Linux, Android, and Apple guy and have an unhealthy bias towards Yesu radios and cheap Chinese radios like the Baofeng. All right, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.